Greetings, geeks. Welcome to Transmission 649. I am Rob Commander Taco Malden. Tonight, we are gathered in pretend low Earth orbit to talk about the 1992 John Woo Hong Kong action flick, Hard Boiled. Just chock full of machine guns, paper cranes, and soft jazz. But I would not talk about Hard Boiled without a triad of good eggs. First up, the perfectly poached Chris DeBona. That was a wonderful use of the word triad, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second, we have the scrambled Nate. I am the scrambled Nate. And finally, we have the always sunny side up, Rob Roseboom. Uh, I'm deviled tonight. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Gentlemen, I had never seen this movie before. I, I have mixed feelings on it, but it was definitely fun to watch all the machine guns. Yeah, that, this, is my, kind of... this is my introduction to the super action-y, uh, you know, Chinese action movies that they made. Because up until then, we had, you know, your stupid uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger action movies yeah. where only 20 people get killed <laughs> in, a, in a hospital <laughs> shootout scene, you know, and it only lasts five minutes. But then these people <laughs> take it to the next level and they murder hundreds of people. So you know. many people. And it's not five minutes long. It's it's no, half it's, the movie. It's an hour yeah. and six minutes. Yeah, they get to the hospital at like oh, an hour no. seven. Yeah. So I think what I, I learned. Like, oh, good. I, I feel like, though, we finally matched that. You know, like now you watch John, like something like John Wick. Yeah, yeah John Wick some, is basically yeah, the hospital. Or some super action-y movie. But we didn't really have those until this and these kind of movies hit the mainstream in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the thing that I realized is that uh, keeping extras on set in Hong Kong must be a lot cheaper uh, because these movies, there are just crowds of people uh, in this movie and they wouldn't e yeah. even in like uh, I was thinking like uh, like we total recall has was another one that had just like has tons of machine guns at the end But there's usually only four or five people in the room at a time And this has like huge scenes where there's just crowds of huddled people being mowed down by machine guns. It's harsh, yeah. man Well, I mean this was five years before the Hong Kong handover to the Chinese government, right? And I just wonder, you know, what was what was work like there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's been really something. In 1992. Unbelievable. Uh, I, mean, now, I gotta tell oh, you, I'm man. not a fan of jazz. <laughs> you know, like this. So, like my, my very first comment here is, can you imagine a time when an American action hero would be playing that clear man <laughs> un unironically <laughs> yeah. in an action movie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, nope, very Chinese. Exactly, what I was thinking it's the <laughs> yeah. it's the tough cop. I mean, you know, he just whips out that clarinet. Mm -hmm. He's got that yeah. soft side. He's got to express, yep. man. It can't always be about the bullets. <laughs> yeah, man. I do love the clarinet, though. Um, the thing I wanted to point out on this was this movie shows how hot, sweltering, and sweaty China is. Yeah, like every time we've been to China, it's like swimming. It's not like breathing. You, you're basically a fish. You're processing water and, and air at the same time. It's it's so hot and humid. Like I've been there like when it's cool and it's still just like, what is going on? And I, I spent a lot of time in Florida, so I know from hot. But man, these yep. places. Everybody's sweaty all the time. Uh, oh, there's a lot of scenes really with, uh, with uh, moist armpits. Yeah. Yeah. I this part I liked because you get a lot of Hong Kong ambiance through the neon montage, which goes on a very long time. Like a really like, long time. <laughs> yeah. Like a minute 40 at least. And, you know, had to be cheap as hell to shoot because it's just, you know, Chow Yun fat clarinet in his face, neon, neon, neon. Yep. Going through the mids. It's their montage, man. Uh, so according to the readings, uh, they were going to tear this restaurant down, so they just filmed <laughs> here. <laughs> so ha has anyone else owned a bird? I mean, they give <laughs> off a lot of dander. Like, yeah. I just wondered yeah. about how that would work in a restaurant setting. Well, actually, all the flour that comes later, it's actually just bird dander. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And birds are birds are annoying. They they squawk. They they draw attention. I I would not want to have a bird restaurant. That no, would be no, literally my definition of hell. Mm-mm. I don't know if you ever watched the WAN show, the Lions Text Tips, their the little chit chatty thing. I can't watch it because one of them has a bird. Ooh. And every once in a while, I, like, ah! I dated a lady whose nope. father had a blue macaw that we took care of for two weeks while he was on vacation, and that is the most horrible animal ever created. There's no. It is yeah. no wonder that pirates kept them because they were they are terrible, just like pirates. And you can eat them <laughs> if you're hungry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, I had a family member with one too, and it, if you did anything in the room, it yelled at you. It was awful. Mm-hmm. Just awful creatures. But it's a John Woo movie, uh, and although I was a little disappointed in the total amount of flying birds, because uh, I was comparing this, so I don't have a lot. It turns out I don't have a lot of John Woo experience because i was comparing this mainly to face off and mission impossible 2 and those both have tons of birds so i was hoping for more birds so many birds yeah really if you watch i think it's a better tomorrow that's where the doves are just like it's the whole population of hong kong they've been turned to birds and and chow yun fat is the one man who can bring them back and they're sweaty sweaty birds sweaty birds all right we got a sound effect yeah Yeah, the the smack you hear that is the wilhelm scream of kung fu movies so yep. back, you know yeah so totally i also like reading reading uh, about this evidently the original main bad guy was supposed to be a baby poisoner yeah i saw yeah. that on the wikipedia page <laughs> and yeah. and the the first test audience is like what <laughs> well that no. no way you can murder 400 people with firearms, <laughs> but don't poison a baby. Well, like wow. a third of the last, this movie is them like rescuing babies. It actually gets a little tedious by the end. There's a lot of babies. There's a lot of babies. Oh, it's China, man. There's a lot of babies. So, so in, in this scene, I'm like, sweet, machine gun fighting, cool. And, and like that there is no bottom to those clips like those (laughs) clips go on forever (laughs) and and like what i didn't really appreciate you know when i even made this note is that like this is probably the shortest gunfight yep in the movie and it's like eight minutes long yeah for sure And, and actually in retrospect watching this i'm like wow Western cinema is really disciplined about its ammunition use. <laughs> they keep in track of their clips. They keep in track of their bullets. Like, you know? like even John Wick sometimes reloads. Yeah. John Wick actually, when he uses his pistol, always reloads after the correct number of shots. Yeah. Pretty cool I move. I did like I did like the stair or the uh, stair rail slide. That yeah. that was that Iconic. was a good. Yeah. Yep. Good scene. Often duplicated. Uh, I felt like, uh, and this this is kind of my theme through the whole movie. This is a two hour and six minute movie. I think so I think that this movie needs to lose like forty minutes and <laughs> and like, like the like keep the good stuff. You know, I, I don't need to be exhausted at the end of every fight. But at this point, I didn't realize that I was in for a marathon. Yeah. Well, you know, if they cut that though, you'd lose the rich storytelling. <laughs> of, an under, of the discovery that that one guy is an undercover cop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh. Uh, I just wanted to note that he went through that whole thing and he still had the toothpick in his mouth. Yeah. Uh, Which is exceedingly dangerous. That's going to get lodged in your soft palate for right? sure. Right. You know, you, you, you laugh, Mr. Osendorf, but that is the leading cause of choking in the United States is toothpicks I, and I, flossers. I, getting I stuck in your in your esophagus. I we have doubt it at all. You should never you should never engage in a full contact gunfight uh, well, with while picking your mouth while picking your teeth. Yeah. No. So uh, just I, play like two seconds of this. I I did yeah. like 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 the flower the in the blood out. Yep. Yep. For the shooting. Mm-hmm. And is he going to put the toothpick back in so it doesn't get covered in blood? Was I, it a hygiene? Thing? I hope he's got a new toothpick. And yeah. and this lets you know that he does not subscribe to Superman's version of what a hero is. Yeah, <laughs> he has absolutely no qualms about killing 
killing an unarmed person. But executing the key witness for his boss's case. <laughs> no problem. Well, yeah. it gives the chief a chance to be like, I can't believe you killed my witness. You know? Yeah. So this is Remember, one this is of... 1992, so this is like the prototype for every film that would come after it, where people are like, that chief is just too hard and mechanical, or whatever. I didn't count, but the number of times that a white surface is splattered with blood, uh, the uh, flower-covered uh, chow yun fat here being the first one, but there's there are so many of them. There are There's like hospital walls and tiles yeah, walls, on floors. Windows, like tiles. White surface? John Woo got to splatter that. Mm-hmm. That's his whole jam, man. I wonder if all the birds were white for that reason. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Thanks to you, I'll never have him. Uh, it did seem like there was a lot of people at that funeral. Uh, like, they made a big deal out of it. Yeah, I mean, given how many people die in this movie, that's <laughs> yeah. a lot of funeral time. You know, like half half a police, uh, you know, cop's job in Hong Kong is going to funerals, apparently. And here is a completely different Hong Kong. And I did like kind of the contrast between the, uh, I yeah. don't know, the back alleys versus the, uh, the downtown. Yeah. The uh, very uh, metropolitan, yeah. you know, yeah. which now, now people would look, I'm sure whatever this looks like is now like, you know, 50 stories above whatever's here, but <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm, yeah sweet music <laughs> i figured this was like so miami vice had lasted until about I, I, four or five years before this so maybe that some of this is a hangover because sometimes you would see a delay in a western influence before it shows up in asian cinema right and they're like man, man i really like that about miami vice the driving down the road in their fast car you know so we're gonna have one of those so oh the other thing i said here is like the the gun in the book thing it's like Yep. It's pretty common, even at this point, right? You know, the gun in the Bible, the gun in the book, but it's, I still love it. I love well, it every time. So it's has the, it the pen is mightier than the sword or whatever, the weapon in the word. Sure. It's, it's a nice trope. Like in Gunpowder Milkshake, you know, there's like an entire library and it's all guns. Every book is a gun, you know, or something. So I just wanted to note that he's literally just eating a sandwich. Just whatever, I'm hungry and there's just gore everywhere. He's just yeah. eating. That's super gross See, to me. Well, I mean, it's either, he, he's he's probably eating at the funerals too. His entire life <laughs> yeah. is shootouts, crime scenes, and funerals. Yeah, I mean, he's got to eat sometimes, yeah. Rob. With this you much know, death, if that guy never ate when he was covered in blood, he would just never eat. <laughs> well, I maybe mean, that's what the toothpicks for, because he's just finished a sandwich. <laughs> he's always finishing a sandwich. <laughs> uh, I did, uh, you know, I, I had a hard time with my suspension of disbelief that he managed to track down the book. Like, if I was going to re-hide my gun, my blood-covered gun book, I, I would put it pretty far away. Uh, you know, maybe I'd like... You wouldn't put it back? Mean, Come on, what yeah, kind of monster are you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't push volume two of the complete works of William Shakespeare back? So <laughs> right back. Even with volume one and three? What yeah. kind of monster are you? You know, they're they're mobsters. They're not anti-librarian. <laughs> gotta put it back. You see, he's troubled by what he has to do, Rob. Mm -hmm. I, I see. That's now. why he makes cranes. That's right. It's symbolic. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I just felt like the the paper crane folding, you know, on top of the on top of the music is like, oh, okay, yep, yep, eighties. 80s, early 90s, but you know, yeah, it's uh, it, it, Asian action movie. Got to have the origami uh, thoughtful scene. Remember, in some cultures, crane birds represent deception, a harbinger of death. Mm. So there you go. So now we get to the cop shop. Uh, there, uh, we we have we have a lot of hijinks here, I guess. Yeah, lots of talking. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you should concentrate on the shooting. Yeah. Well, we got to introduce the love interest, kinda. Kinda. Ooh. I mean, it used to be his old lady. And yeah. the, there's a part here where I, f I felt like everything was seemed very Western until they all started offering inf incense at the office shrine. Yeah. And uh, I was just right? like, oh, yeah, that that's that's a little different. We don't we don't have that here. That is not how it works. 
Uh, so then uh, there's the recurring thing with flowers, uh, and uh, they are sending their passcodes, I guess, their, their, their decryption keys uh, through lyrics and melodies. Uh, I actually, it, I thought that was kind of clever. I liked it. Yeah, that part is kind of clever. Mm -hmm. And they do but actually you know, carry this through. I, I, guess, I guess it's easier if you have a language that is tonal uh, in some part. But I, you know, can you imagine someone trying to do that in English without being able to hit the right pitch or <laughs> hit the right key? I did right. think that it was a little weird that after they decrypt the messages, they are still like kind of encoded lion near trap. I mean, like maybe you could be a little more. You could be clear at this point. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you got you, him. You got Come the code. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Every it's like, and also, you know, it's Lionel Richie, man. That's right. <laughs> and everybody's smoking inside. Mm hmm. It was the 90s. In Hong Kong. Yeah. Oh, so the only part about this thing coming up. So I, I, I watched it with my wife. She's like, yeah, we should totally watch this. I'm like, great. Um, and uh, as he's pulling the fish out of Kowloon Bay, she's like, don't eat fish from Kowloon Bay. <laughs> she's like, that's not a fish you want to eat. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's a city. It's, a city. it's hungry. So, yeah. I just thought it was yeah, weird that he like thought. walked out to that pier to fish. Mm-hmm. That's not cool. He should get some buddies. Oh, yeah. And then, so the next big action set piece here, the uh, the BMX bandits. No, no the yeah. motocross gunfights. Yeah. yeah. Nate, Nate, you called this out. You should talk about it. I don't know what it means uh, to you. Well, he's not at the time code yet. I'm taking my time because you're I, I waited until they opened fire. Yeah, here you go. So you've got a lot of in-warehouse, um, uh, you know, Cycling along with uh, semi-automatic weapons and yeah, just play a little bit. They have a lot of fun. Yep, that, that's that's what goes on. You run around and shoot things. I did think it was weird that like that like the floor in this place looks like asphalt. Like it's a like a like just they just put a building on top of a parking lot. Yeah. Seems a little weird. It's a warehouse. Yeah. Good for them. Uh, this scene is pretty entertaining, but like all of these action sequences, man, they could have trimmed like 30% out of it, and I probably would have been a little bit more into it in the last half. Yeah. So uh, there's a scene uh, 3738 that you should play. Here we go. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and spin! <laughs> I just, I, I loved th this scene when I was first, first time I saw it, I remember I was like, wow, look yeah. at that. You know, it's like, nope. you know, gymnastic gun, Kata, motocross, BMX guy. Like, wow, look at that. Well, and That's the joy, the joy in these shots is like, they did it. You know what I mean? There wasn't yeah. like where they shot every individual component on a separate set of wires and then pasted them all together, you know, six months later in a computer. They did it. Someone yeah. actually jumped up off that motorcycle while it was moving. Yep. Yeah. And then all of those dudes had their squibs and they were yep. all detonating. So many squibs. So, and honestly, I think it was just like every lady finger available in China <laughs> was used, you know, to show little, <laughs> little explosions, you know? Hello? What's your name? 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 Oh, I had the wrong time code on that. He just there's a shot there where he lights his cigarette his, like his on a giant open a, flame. Yeah, I'm just like that's not safe. No, you should do that, that. Too. kids. It, it, that looks like that'll put his hair turn his hair on fire. Well, I mean, if you look at his hair, it's kind of like spiky. Maybe that's why. Like maybe he used to have really long shaggy hair, but he keeps lighting his cigarettes like a dumbass. Well, I feel yeah. like safety isn't paramount for them. No, it's true. Yeah. And a sawed-off shotgun, what an awful weapon to have at long range. <laughs> you know, a shotgun with a pistol grip like that. Just... This this particular this particular part of the so you know they are uh, whatever the the other triad gang is is storming Uncle Hoy, 
he throws one grenade under one of these cars and it brings like five vehicles like <laughs> down like there's explosions it's massive <laughs> carnage and i'm like that's one grenade it's like, a really good grenade yeah. yeah and yet these same cars withstand a million rounds when our heroes behind <laughs> They have their little standoff. There's a lot of standoffs in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually really like uh, how Uncle Hoy in this scene uh, approaches approaches it. He was just like, yep, I knew someday someone was going to sell me out. Didn't think it would be you. That was my, my bad. Yeah, he is a great gangster. Mm-hmm. All right, well, more shooting, more flying. Yep. All right, we jump in uh, like 15 minutes now. Oh, there you go. Mexican oh. standoff. Yep. We always so, have like a million of these in a John Wu movie. Yep. Oh, wait, uh, I got a few in the wrong time spot here. Right. What? I know, that's my bad. You uh, have like a second list of times. No, uh, I just pasted mine in into the wrong slot like a dumbass. Uh, I I just wanted to say that this is like the king of the oh, world yeah, right. from Titanic, but it's yep. the exact opposite because he's so sad. <laughs> it's like, I'm so <laughs> sad on my boat. Everything's I'm horrible. killing people. <laughs> that, that made me giggle. <laughs> paint, me like one of your, paint me like one of your triad girls. <laughs> 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 Half the department. <laughs> he refers to him as vodka uh, in that scene yeah. as well. Instead of tequila. Yeah. Which cracks me up. Uh, fighting in a boat, as you do. So, uh, one thing that's worth pointing out, I believe that Tony Leung, who plays the the, the undercover guy, um, he was the Leo DiCaprio role in Infernal Affairs, which is what The Departed was based on. So he's he goes back, way back. He's in all these movies. Babies. So yeah, this begins the hospital scene, which Whoa. is super long. And An hour has, and three minutes. And, and like has just lots of gratuitous panning of hospital stuff. So you know, yeah. like, I, I know it was an office building. It was some old office building that they, they but they s wanted to get their money's worth out of this set. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. Yeah, I had forgotten how long. I just remembered the epic hospital thing. Yeah, me too. how long it was. We were having trouble staying awake. <laughs> Honestly, I, well, well, I'm an old person. Quite, fr quite frankly, I was amazed at how long this movie was. Yeah. I assumed it was an hour and a half. Yeah, because yeah. like you, I I had not remembered the hospital scene being this excruciating, yeah. lo loud. You know, it's just long. Yeah, it's long. I liked the attention to detail that he turned the oxygen off before giving the guy the cigarette. Uh, I thought that was nice. Yeah. Well, he doesn't want to start a fire. I know it's responsible. And now we have a 37 minute break in our notes because we're all just like, oh, no, that you have. A I, I put a few in the yeah. wrong uh, spot okay. here. Oh, I just I noted that they apologize to each uh, each corpse. I like corpse. That's, that's a nice touch. Yeah, they're stand up guys. Yeah, they're not disrespectful. Right. Yeah. Uh, then we get to this thing. And guys, he successfully brute forced the code. It was it was that red it was the red button. Yep. <laughs> well, well you do have the two wrong choices. Way, exploded, you know. So. Yeah. Then they do the I thing. I kind of like that they built this little hidden area inside this hospital, only accessible through the morgue. I think yeah. that's kind of clever. It's dark. Uh, but yep, that's. 30... What... This is such a lot. Everyone dies. Yeah. They kill everybody. Just you know? shooting, shooting, shooting. Like a bad time to be in medical care in pre Chinese Hong Kong, you know. Don't you have any dreams? 
He wants to move to Antarctica. He says, it's cold. You enjoy the cold? He's got not a lot going for it, but... Uh, uh, after all the darkness, he's... I watched this... Uh, after, he, he wants sunlight after all this darkness. And the problem here is that if you're going to go to Antarctica, you are going to get a lot of sunlight, but then... Yeah, but then you go to Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get all the darkness. On your boat, you just go boop, 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 you know. I, I felt a little bad. Uh, that Chase guy, the sun. That guy doesn't really understand, like, you know, how sun works. Well, you know, he's he's a shooter. He's not a sunologist. No, he should learn jazz <laughs> so he can be a lover, <laughs> not a shooter. He's a sailor and an origami person. Right. Well, this is That's you, a... Rob. Okay, so just play this. Full side of banging well, I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. My point of, in the movie is this. Once melty face, one-eyed, super killer dude comes up to you and is like, dude, you gotta chill. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is way too much. I mean, and look at me. Yeah. I'm in a I'm in a doctor's outfit that I murdered. I I have killed <laughs> over a hundred people in the last forty eight yeah. hours for you. And I'm, I'm covered in blood, and I think off. you're yeah, and I think you're out of hand. <laughs> you should listen. He should have. If he listened, he would have gotten out of here just fine. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Oh, of course. So there's babies. Uh, so many babies. Um, yeah. Did I put the wrong time code in this for this too? Oh, they need help in the maternity wing. Uh, I just this is then the, the the like ten minutes of there's there's too many babies for him to shoot on the ammunition he has left. <laughs> oh, he missed one of the babies. Like yeah, all the other are fine. Yeah, and they they like take great care to put cotton in their ears. I mean, it's you know it makes more sense with the knowledge that there was a baby poisoning plot at some point built in because the ba it was probably written that those babies were recovering from being poisoned. Uh, like uh, it man. probably you know, made more sense. Buy that, once you buy that many babies, to be in the movie, <laughs> yep. you gotta use them, right? Yeah. See, otherwise, they the just grow up. With re the script rewrite at this point. <laughs> I contracted for all these babies. Cute little baby. That baby's really cute. Less cute when he gets covered in gore. Yeah, the only thing I wanted to say is the uh, ISO rating for cotton balls. It's not going to say that kid's hearing. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Did I overshoot? Ew. <laughs> this baby's so no cute. Covered in I was a pure surface once too, John Woo. That baby's <laughs> hardcore now. That's Love right. It. He's gonna he's gonna turn into the next one of the, these guys. Yeah. Alan 2.0. Oh, I understand that. I love the yeah. scene. Well, well I, you I, know, give it's... it a little break during this, but the, this is so perfectly staged. For it's, sure, it's 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 like a Da Vinci. It's like the Last Supper, mm -hmm. the way that they stage it. Here, just now, let it go. Look at this scene. It's like it's bullet time, but everyone's in real time. It's amazing. <laughs> These guys know what they're doing for sure. Yeah. Yep, melty face, one eyed guys. Like I agree, yeah. this is ridiculous. <laughs> you guys get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then his boss shows up. <laughs> He has a different opinion. <laughs> this is so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dumb. But you spend a lot of time setting up babies. You gotta let the baby pee out the fire. How's your ankles? <laughs> <laughs> but what a stunt. I mean, yeah. again, it's like, 
who's the jerk bag who's like, okay, I'm gonna just hold on to this thing and jump. It'll be fine. Look at this thing. And again. <laughs> Somebody did that. <laughs> Somebody did yeah. that. But yeah, there's long-term damage. <laughs> that baby. I mean, the good news is the emotional scarring will probably be relatively insignificant because babies, when they're that small, are dumb. Yeah, and that you can bounce, you know, back <laughs> real fast. And I don't think there's really a baby in this pocket, but okay. <laughs> So yeah, well, and he shoots him. Yep. Uh, and this is the point where <laughs> can we be done yet? <laughs> commitment, man. It, that is a commitment. But you know. Uh, yeah, and the thing I said here is like the guy's like, "Ugh, can we just stop the movie?" We're just done. We've been doing this for two hours and six minutes. <laughs> we are all it's tired. Everyone's nine dead. years of our lives. Everyone's every bullet dead. in Hong Kong has been fired. Yep. I'll just have one more through my stomach and then take care of it. But they set it up earlier. They burned the records. They burn, I guess, mm -hmm. Alan's records. And then, uh, yeah, uh, we well, get I just our... thought that would be bad for the carpet to burn it like that. You know, mm -hmm. so. I feel like with the incense burning, maybe they're just used to burning stuff in their offices. Like, that's just yeah. kind of part of it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we see, uh, more cranes and I guess, uh, Alan's going to Antarctica to live in the eternal where sun. It's always sunny. Where it's, it's always, always sunny, sunny year round. He's, he's going to want a heavier jacket. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Even the summer's there. It's still pretty cold. Still well, not I, sweater weather. <laughs> what's funny about that is he took, he took a bullet in his stomach and he's wearing a sling and a thing over his shoulder. I'm like, what, what? He, he, we saw the movie, you know? <laughs> I mean, he was in that hospital. They shot there for 40 days. The actor was probably just injured a bunch. Uh, yeah. Like That's probably his real world injuries. Yeah, you're probably not wrong. Uh, that was a fun one, but it, it's it's interesting, like, to see, for me anyway, to see this movie today and to think about, like, we, we talked a lot in Running Man, I think, about how just the sheer amount of scenes that are just machine guns. And then we see like John Wick, where you see like care is taken in John Wick to make each action, action scene kind of distinct uh, from, from the others. You know, he changes his weapon, they change the locations. This has three or four major action sequences and they are mostly machine guns. Yeah, motorcycles, yeah, hospital, but mostly just machine guns over Explosives. and over again. And it, 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 it wore on me. Uh, and I think that the, it's cool to see kind of the template for these kinds of movies uh, just really well executed. I'm glad that we're tighter about it now. Yeah. Go you on. just can't go back to old gunfight porn. You need your new gunfight yep. porn, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this was an important transition. Uh, yeah. We watched this movie a lot in my first apartment. And it was interesting watching it again because... Yeah, I don't remember it being this long, but I think it's just because this type of movie wasn't as common at that point. Yeah, you know, this yeah. was you, like you would never pace it like this today. Right. Yeah, and it wouldn't yeah. take much to trim it down uh, because they are they, they like you can see. Uh, like the remnants of the baby poisoning plot line and the love story, because I guess Michelle Yao was originally going to be cast in that part. Like you can see those parts were kind of still there. You could have probably trimmed that all out, got yourself a 90 minute movie that would actually hold up. That would actually be a fun project, you know, to see if you could edit this movie, like, you know, the Phantom edit or one of those, like, could you edit this movie and make it pace uh, for a modern audience? But uh, darn entertaining. And, and, the main thing for me, whenever we I watch these movies from the 80s and 90s, those people are actually doing that. They're jumping off of buildings. Yeah. They're falling on the ground. They got squibs blowing up on their chests. Mad respect. There's long-term damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think, man, you know, they traded long-term health, you know. Like, whoever was that guy who jumped out of that building, he's he's still, he's he's limping today. Almost guaranteed. All right. Well, just think about his poor shoulder. You know? Yeah. Well, he's going to have to recover in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to take long healing. Rob, are you next? 
I am. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. And you you already know what I'm going to pick. So Oh, good. This is this is going to be the most modern movie we've watched. DuckTales? And it's going to be one that quite frankly I think you're either really going to dig or you're not going to like at all. I, I don't think, think we already saw the Lost Boys. Going to be any sort of middle ground with this one. So this is a very low budget modern love love affair like love project of those 80s sci-fi overly gory action movies uh this movie is called turbo kid it's a very low budget canadian film that is a homage to all of those crazy warriors of the wasteland kind of movies that came out after uh the road warrior and everyone's like hey we can make a buck making this movie too this is a movie that for me the first 20 minutes are kind of hard because it took me a really long time to figure out what they were doing and there's a moment in the middle uh and rob you probably know the moment that i'm talking about where apple kind of reveals what's going on and the joy that i experienced in that moment where you kind of see okay i get what's going to happen for the next hour it's really fun I like this movie a lot. <laughs> what was the connection? There was something I saw where they were talking about Turbo Kid. Well, we'll talk next week. No, I think it was you guys. It was something that... Yeah, we were talking about it in channel a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen. Fairly well, Chris Bona. Thanks for having me. Goodbye, Rob Roseboom. Goodbye. Farewell, Nato Stendorp. Fairly well. Thank you, Chris, for the pick. I was Rob Commander Taco Malda. We'll see you Friday with some news. Bye. <laughs>